In this video, you are gonna learn the fundamental concepts about Node.js strings in practice. I'll teach you what are the Node.js strings, the Node.js string types, the best user scenarios, and the theory behind it. I'll show you in practice the most common scenarios we use Node.js streams even unconsciously, such as the CLI apps, web APIs, and much more. This will be a game-changing feature for you who want to create Node.js performant and scalable applications to process terabytes of data on demand. Hello, my friend, I'm Eric Wendell, and welcome to one of the most important videos on this channel. Today is the Node.js Stream Day, one of the most important Node.js features that scare devs all over the world. I'm gonna teach you what are, how they work, their categories, and practical examples so you can start using them in your own projects. Ah, as I'll be using the Node.js 18, I will introduce the newest features such as mapping and filtering data flows. This is really amazing. Ah, and stay with me until the end of this video because I've prepared something special for you. I've been building a content bundle for you to go forward and learn even more about Node.js streams. Well, open your favorite JavaScript code editor, get a drink, and let's begin. The Node.js streams are on the Node.js core since the first versions of the platform. They are commonly used for on-demand data processing, proving that Node.js can handle big loads of data processing. JavaScript, as you may have heard, wasn't made to process too much data in memory at once. If you load a 2 gigabytes string in memory, the platform will crash and warn you that you've exceeded the memory limits. Well, Eric, then it's better to use Python to process process large files, isn't it? If you are a JavaScript developer and want to process big loads of data, want to download files on demand, or process big reports across many spreadsheets, then let me present you to the Node.js streams. Before moving on, please don't forget to press the like button here. It helps me a lot on what I've been doing here on this channel. You can also suggest what you wanna learn by commenting here on this video. I usually read all comments one by one and I add them to my content backlog. Every week I publish a new video here in Portuguese or in English about JavaScript, career and many tips to help you to conquer that dream job and make you a dev specialist in JavaScript. If you are not a subscriber, subscribe to this channel so you won't miss all content I've been publishing here. Today, I'm going to show you in practice what are and what is the Node.js string's purpose. However, if you want to go deeper after this video, I'll show you later the new amazing training course I've been building focused on creating complex and powerful projects using Node.js strings. It's already on the video description in case you want to check it out, but I will mention it after the hands-on session, okay? Nice! I've also been speaking at conferences around the world about Node.js streams and you can watch it later if you want to. But don't worry, I'm gonna teach you about the Node.js streams essential concepts so you can not only follow this class, but also start using it on your own projects. In summary, the Node.js streams are functions to help you process big amounts of data on demand. Imagine that you need to process your company's annual sales report. You want to average your company's and affiliates' gross income, process taxes, aggregate all business intelligence data, and put it on a dashboard. As I've mentioned at the beginning of this video, a 1 gigabyte file in memory is more than enough to break the Node.js. Then, you can assume that you cannot just read a whole file and put it in memory at once. Now, imagine that instead of processing the whole report, you are gonna process it on demand. You will paginate and gradually process items, every 10 lines of the report, for example. And at the end, you generate the final amount. Looks better, isn't it? In this way, you can even think that beyond making your company's gross income, you can make the annual cost report, employees' salaries 
report, and much more. Ah, and processing everything without worrying whether the Node.js will be able to process or not a whole load of data. Assuming that you are going to process data from now on, on demand, it doesn't matter whether your file is at 10 kilobytes or 10 terabytes. You gradually read and process your data. Bringing it to the Node.js vocabulary, your report, instead of a binary file parsed into a huge string, is turned into a buffer. A buffer is a format that helps you to split your data into small pieces and process them independently. Those small pieces of files are also called chunks, and they are in fact the data that our JavaScript functions will handle. Chunks are the reason why we can avoid wasting the server's memory and processing, and we solve 90% of the edge cases that people usually say that Node.js wasn't built for that. Bringing it more to our world, imagine a golden nugget. The golden nugget is in the solid state. You've melted down this golden nugget to transform it into a liquid state gold. You then spill the liquid state gold into a filter funnel, add chemical products and etc. When the gold starts going through the filter funnel, you now have a stream of gold. In other words, you have a liquid flow going through each processing step. Instead of processing a whole ton of gold, you've reduced it into a liquid state and now you can deal with it in small portions. That's it, my friend, a ton of gold turned out into liters of gold, or in our case, chunks of gold. That's amazing, isn't it? As I said, this liquid state gold got into the funnel, then the funnel will be the one who's our data source for processing. In Node.js strings, the one who's the data source is also called as readable string. After the liquid went through the funnel, it got into the first processing step, a step meant to clean all impurities on the liquid state gold. In Node.js streams, they step to map or clean data to get only what's needed for the process or even parse it into another format, it's called transform streams. From now on, adding assets or mixing other chemical products, each one of those additional steps it's also transforming streams. Finally, it's time to transform the liquid gold into something else, right? Now, you are going to drain it into another processing step. Each chunk or each liter of gold will become a small golden nugget and gets out of the pipeline, finishing the process. The last step before ending the pipeline to make the actual final product in Node.js streams is called writable streams. Just think of it as whenever you need to print any data on the screen, save data on the file, or make an upload to an external source, anything that represents the final step on your pipeline is a writable stream. Enough theory, right? Let me summarize it before we go to our hands-on session. Firstly, a readable stream is a data source, a database, a file, a web request, or any data source you are gonna consume. A transform string is used to convert data, filter, or map objects. In the end, it's just a refining step that will pass through data to another processing step. And finally, a writable string is usually the final step. For each item on your data string, it generates the final output Output of your item. The final step could be a console.log, an external database, a file, a web API, another string pipeline, and much more. Well, think with me. Your big file was reduced into little pieces of data, and each piece or chunk will run throughout each processing step as a funnel. This funnel with processing steps in Node.js streams are called pipelines. If you work with Node.js to build web APIs, you've probably used Node.js streams unconsciously. In the Node.js HTTP modules, the request object in your API is a readable string and the response object is a writable string. The request object receives data from the user and the response object outputs data to the user. Wow! And if you came from some data processing area, you may have heard about the famous extract, transform, and load steps, or simply ETLs. They are other names for our readable, transform, and writable streams. Well, let's check this out in practice then. 
I'll be using the Node.js 18. It's important that you use the same Node.js version as mine, so you won't have any problems executing the examples right there. Enough talking, and let's go to the demo. Well, I am here on my VS Code, and as you can see, it's an empty folder. I'm using basically the Node.js 18, the first version right now and it's required for you to use the same version because we are going to explore some new features on the Node.js streams. Nice! Well, first of all, I'm going to introduce you what are the Node.js streams in the Node.js ecosystem, and then we're going to create a web API, consume data, parse data, and so on, okay? All right, let's create the first folder here. I'll call example 01 Node.js common scenarios. I will write it as index.mjs. It's just to use the ECMAScript modules. The first example is how your application interacts with the terminal. So terminal inputs. Okay. Um, let's suppose that we're going to use the process.stdin. Okay. The process.stdin just gets the input from the terminal from the users. So I'm going to attach an event here and I will grab this message as console.log like terminal input was and I will put it the message, right? So if I run this code, let's go to the example one node index.js. Look, nothing has happened yet, but as soon as I put here and press enter, we can see a buffer, right? See how the buffer is changing as I put the content here. So the buffer is just uh, the whole string or the whole data parsed there so we can split this data in much more inputs, okay? Now I just got the data from the std in and now I want to send back to the std out. The std out is just our terminal, right? So look how we can do it. I will just get std out. Actually, I will put here const std in, and I will do the same to the std out. So I'm just move it from here, and now std out, right? So std out. Let's see data. Whenever I get any data, I will do basically exactly the same here. Okay. Let's see what changes right here. So I'm just grab node again, and I will put, and look, the terminal didn't show anything, right? But imagine that I don't have this data right here. I want to leak whenever I cut from STD in and send it to the uh, STD out. So I'm just gonna do like a process STD out dot write. Okay, I'll grab the message, I will put to string, and to uppercase, okay? But now, I'll do something differently. I will link both objects. Whenever I have some inputs here, I'm gonna redirect to the std out. So, let's see how it goes. So, I will just use stdin.pipe and std out. Well, if I uncomment this line and run again, I will just write Eric and then we can see the results. Okay. Oh, hola in Portuguese. Oh, nice. So we can see that the result is coming right here, right? If I comment this line, look how different it's this one. So I will write Eric and nothing happens. If I, I write Eric again, I can see the result, okay? Uh, the process std out is the same thing that the console is doing behind the scenes. So if I put here, the console.log just do uh, uh, slash n, just a break line for us automatically. So Eric and Eric again, and then it will just publish there, okay? Okay, so this is the most common scenario for us. Uh, let's do another example here. I will just uncomment this and I will comment all of them, okay? Just for you to understand. So the process std is a readable stream, right? Because it's our source 
and the std out is a writable string as we write data for it okay and to just make them as a funnel as i said it, we use just the pipe perfect let's go to the second example well let's generate a big file right so how can you generate a file here we can actually use the node.js program here and pass some data look how cool is this i'm gonna use process.std out right and i'm gonna use the crypto and i will use the random bytes okay and i will create a file with one and nine zeros perfect and then let's see how it goes i will just copy this one okay and i'm gonna use the e here to evaluate a string so let's see how it goes oh it's missing it's missing right okay process std out dot right perfect to write a string oh and now we run again node e to evaluate a string and then we can run again perfect we can see a huge string right here i'll just press ctrl c okay we're gonna get all of these bytes and send it to a file okay so how do we do that we just move to a big file it's important for you to run uh, on a linux or unix based system so you you won't have any problem running this command perfect it just generate a file here i will also copy this command so you can use it later and then let's see how big is this file look it's almost one gigabyte right oh nice so it will just generate a file with one and nine zeros like one two three four five six seven eight nine look how big is this bytes right so just a billion bytes right nice okay now i'm gonna use the http to consume this data how do we do that so i'm gonna import the http from http okay the native module always i'm gonna use import from fs just to read data and send data and i'm gonna show the difference well i'm gonna use red file sync and i'm gonna create just an http server so create server request response and then i will listen on a port will be 3000 i will actually listen to an event on listening and then console.log server is listening 3000 at 3000 okay so we have a http server using node.js and now let's see how it goes if i just try to read that file so i will read use red file sync okay and i will put the big file which is the file i just made here and i will also add to string so imagine i want to parse something in memory here and i want to send to my users later so I will just rest dot write because response remember i said response is a writable stream and request is a readable stream so i will just send the file and finish the request okay i'm gonna save it and run it again so index and now i'm gonna open another terminal here and i'm gonna curl our server so i'm gonna use curl localhost 3000 and look everything just break down the javascript just say oh my god this string is too long i can't handle it okay so it's not like uh, wise to make it just trying to read the whole string in memory as i said so what we're gonna do we can do it as a string okay to solve this problem right here we could just send it as non-string and it should work because it will 
get us a buffer and then our server can handle it as a buffer. So our server, it's actually working. Uh, our curl should just say, oh, I need an output. So we'll just say output dot big. And then it will download our file uh, on demand. Look how cool is it? Okay, so our server is working fine using the read file sync. Perfect, but we won't use this file, right? Otherwise, if you have more and more clients trying to access our file, it's not cool to handle it. So how do we do that? I'll just comment it, okay? And now I'm gonna use the actually uh, readable stream. So I'll just import the read stream, okay? And then I will read the same file, big.file. And now I'm gonna use the pipe, remember the pipe, to create other tasks or other processes. And I'm gonna redirect this to our writable stream. So I'm grabbing data from a readable stream and just drain it to a, a writable stream. Let's see how different is it. So here we had chunks of 60 megabytes. And let's see what's the difference. I'm gonna run a curl. And look, the chunk now, it looks smaller, right? Actually, it's very similar, but I'm gonna show in the next examples that even more, even not just reading the data, we can filter, we can map or whatever we want. And in this case, we can do it, right? So we're gonna have to get all the huge string in memory, parse it, make some like calculations and everything else, and then OJS will just crash. Perfect, well, I think it's enough for now for our first example. I will just remove the big files just to not consume too much memory or GitHub later. And I will create our example two, which is actually our project in this class, okay? So creating and consuming an, whoa, a web API. So it's a, a long name. But it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna stop this one and I'll go back. I will just go to the two. In it, a Node.js project. I can close this file as well. Here, I will put the type as module. So we can use ECMAScript modules on .js files. Perfect. I will create also a folder called source or SRC. And I will have two files. I will have the client and I will have the server, server.js. The goal here is the server will provide us data. So it will be our data source and the client will consume, parse, filter, and do a lot of calculations inside this data, okay? So you can see something closer to what you've been doing at your own work. Well, let's start from the server, okay? So I'll just grab this much more here. Firstly, we're gonna need a HTTP server. So I'm gonna import HTTP from HTTP. So you don't need to use Express for it. Nice, you can use the raw Node.js to create everything. Well, I'm gonna create the function handler, which has the request and response. Remember, a writable and readable string. And then I will use HTTP create server. I'm gonna pass the handler. I'm gonna use listen 3000 again. We could have copied the server from that other example, but it's fine. So once it's listening, I will just console.log server is running at 3000. Perfect. Well, the first thing we can do is import some functions here from the native node stream. I'll put node here just as a good practice, just to get to know that it's like a native module, not a, a, a third part package. So I will first get the readable and then I will generate data to redirect it to the response. Look how amazing is it? So readable and then I will grab some functions here. I will have read, and then the read will have the functions. We will send, the read will just uh, send the data to the users. We'll just create our, our data source. 
So hello world. And then I will use push to say that our stream has finished. Okay? Perfect. With it, it's simple. We just use uh, our readable stream. So I will just create here const readable stream, which is our readable. And then I will redirect to the response object, right? So pipe to our response. Just it? Just it. Okay, on one side, I will run. Let's just see if I'm on the right folder. Node, node SRC, server. Okay, the server is running. Once I run the curl on localhost 3000, we can see hello world right there. Oh, we can do something smarter, right? Imagine that we have been consuming some data from a database or uh, an external source. Well, what function in JavaScript was meant to consume data or to generate data on demand? Think about it. Yes, this one, my friend. We can create a generator function. Ooh. I will call it run, and then I will create a for loop, let index zero, index less than mm, 99, less or equal to 99, and index plus plus, okay? Then I will generate an object called data, and I will create an ID. I'm not sure what ID I'm gonna use right now, but I will put like my name, put yours, hey, 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 please. And then I will put index, okay? Just to make some fake data right here. And I will put an object called at with date.now, okay? Well, using generator functions, it's cool because we don't need to wait for the for loop to end, to send data. Oh, look how amazing is that? We can use yield and send data. Well, on the first index, it will create object and send the object. We can consume the object here. We can redirect or drain it to our response and then we can process the other iterations of our for loop. This is really, really nice, okay? So how do we gonna use run? I will just uh, comment it so you can see it later if you want it. In our read function, I'll do something here. Well, to consume a readable string, we're gonna use for const data of run. So as long as run have data to process for us, we're gonna consume it and just send to our customers. So we we'll just use push and I will make something smarter. When we are working with Node.js streams, we cannot use objects. We work only with buffers or strings. So I'm gonna use JSON is string file and I will have the data. And I will also concat with like uh, slash n just to have a break of line on each interaction, okay? And then here, just saying that the string has finished it, okay? Let's see how our server will be handling it right now. So I'm gonna just restart the server and send the data and look, it's working perfectly. Okay, now you can imagine that you can consume like a whole database, make like integrations if you want with this code. Well, let's just make a... Uh, something here to create our ID. So I'm gonna create from node crypto and I'm gonna use random UUID to create our smart UID, okay? Well, from now on, it's just it. Our server is ready. Just make sure it's working. Like we, we can see we have an ID right here. And on the client side, I'm gonna just consume this data and I'm gonna parse it and trying to make some other calculations, okay? On the client to consume data is very easy. On the client to consume data, we can use it uh, from the HTTP module as well. We can use get. So the get will return uh, a response object with a readable stream for us. So I'm gonna create a function here, get HTTP stream. Okay, and I'm gonna make a promise just with the resolve function. 
and i will use get right and then we have to pass url so the url for us will be http slash slash localhost 3000 and then we're gonna use it and then on its callback we receive the response object oh response okay and then i'm just gonna resolve the response object resolve notice here that we are not grabbing the result here okay we have just the response object right now and then we can start listening to, to the objects and grab the results perfect okay so i'm gonna grab the string get http string and then look if you just grab the string dot pipe as we've been using to the process dot std out let's see how it works and now i'm gonna run the client so i'm gonna go to the to node source and client Ooh, something string.pipe is not a function oh it's missing an await here because it's a promise right so let me run it again Ooh, it's working it's working fine so we are just redirecting all the data from the server to the process std out which is our writable string our final product okay now let's do something interesting with this data firstly i'm gonna use some objects from the old version of streams to show it working and then i'm gonna show you the new way to make it work okay so here i will put just a a good practice node atp and then i will import from node string i will grab the transform okay transform and writable so all of the categories all of the node.js stream types i told you earlier are on the node.js stream native module okay no need to install anything on this time perfect the transform so i'm just gonna comment this line so we can do other stuff okay so to make some calculations i'm gonna grab the transform object okay and look how it's similar to our readable object so here we have an object called transform a function called transform and in this case we're gonna receive the chunk the encode and the callback yeah callbacks my friend <laughs> okay let's see how it's working so i'm gonna have like a console.log here chunk and i'll show the chunk again perfect and don't forget to call the callback right here so as we know the callback receives the error on the first arg and then the result on the second and let's run to see it so we have the buffer right so if we try to json dot parse on this chunk what do we have we have the actually data coming from the server very nice okay what do we want to do with this object well i'll firstly try to parse this uh number that we have here and say if it's whether even or odd i think it's a good calculation to just see things working okay so const my number I'm gonna use a um, regular expression to get all digits. I'm gonna use exec on the item.name. So I'm just grab here to get this item. Const item JSON parse. Okay. Uh, usually rejects returns like an array. So I'm gonna get just the first options just to grab the number right here. Perfect. And now I can make my calculation. So it's even my number, the rest of division equals zero. And now I know it's even or not. So our item.name will be equal item.name.concat. So if it's even, I'll grab a space, even. Otherwise, it's odd let's see the difference right now oh we don't have any console here console.log item oh 99 is 
odd, 98 is even, and it's working, but it's missing a space here, okay? Perfect! We have some calculations here. Well, perfect. I will just send the item here, and notice that if we try to just send a, an object here, it says that it's an invalid archetype, okay? So we have to use strings or buffers. So now we won't have any output, but the project is not failing anymore. Okay, well, as I told you, transform strings are usually used to make transformation, clean data, clean all impurities, but we have also the newly released functions on the Node.js streams. Look, we have filter and we have map as well. So I'm gonna do something here. Well, let's try to filter only what's even, okay? So I'm gonna use chunk, chunk includes, and I will use even. And then I will redirect this output to our std out. So we have even and odd. Yeah, it seems it's th this filter is not working properly. But let's see. We're gonna use the writable string for, for our final product, right? So the final product for us in this case will be a writable. And the signature is very similar as well. So we use write. It's the same chunk encoding callback. And then I will just console.log chunk chunk. Okay? Let's see how it handles. It seems it's grabbing the data as a buffer. Look, how can we do that? So we, we use object mode true, and then this will force the string to use oh the string to use the strings instead of buffers. Let's see how it works right now. Oh here I have the chunk as well. I will use the same object mode on the writable stream. And let's see it's working. Nice. Now we have the object right here, nice. Right? So the even it's just got one and let's check it out why this one. Well, it's missing something very important right here. We have a callback to say that we have done working with this chunk, right? So I'm just using return just to make sure anything will work here and then we can see our result working so only the even is working so now you know when you have to work with string without using like two string at any time you can use like the object mode okay let's do something just to close this class i will use the dot map right so i'm gonna do something similar chunk so i'm gonna use right now two upper case and then let's see how it changes oh everything it's in uppercase right now nice look how cool is it it just came out it's like two versions it just came out i think on 18 or 16 but it's pretty nice on the past we used to do the filter map inside a transform function so you have here it it could have been, okay, so it could have been a map function, okay, perfect, let's then redirect this whole pipeline to a file, so we will finish our class. I will import from node.fs the create write stream that we use a lot to work with files and streams, okay. Instead of using the writable string, I will have to comment here, okay? Because the writable string is the last step. I couldn't have two writable strings here. So I'm going to use, I will actually comment, we can't have two writable strings on the same pipeline, okay? It's just one. So I'm going to use pipe. And here I'm going to use the create writable stream and I will have a name. So response.log. And I will use the flag to append. So I will use A. So flag, flag 
a append data if existed okay so we will create a new file here but as we are running a lot of tests it will just uh, see different outputs okay perfect let's run let's try it out so now we won't have any output right here but we have a new file here if we click at this file we can see that's all of like in the same line right so let's go to our code and just put here uh, a break line I'm gonna run again and then now we can see all of our output right here Ooh, nice but it seemed it didn't append right let's check it out I think it's flags on the plural let's try it again I will just remove everything from here save it and run again so now we have our project I will run again Ooh, very nice so we are creating a lot of stuff okay to summarize what we've been doing here we have our source right which is a readable string which is an API we are consuming data from an API we are using the pipe function to basically run tasks so we have for each step or on function we have a pipe function but we have filter and map which is the new functions for working uh, with strings we've we've been using transform function here for business logic making a lot of assumptions and concocting strings and so on and then on the filter we are filtering data we are mapping data and the cool thing is we are not trying to get all of this data in memory we are receiving the data and as long as the data is available to consume we are just filtering it mapping it and redirecting it to our final file nice and on on our server side we have a generator function which is creating data on demand we are consuming this data on demand and send send it to the customers who is consuming our api okay if you've watched this video this far and haven't left your like you know right and you should also subscribe to this channel so you are not gonna miss the contents i've been creating here ah and i have a good news for you i've been building a complete web course focused on teaching node.js strings in practice i'll show you how you can test build and use the node.js streams for good you build real and complex projects such as video audio and big loads of data processing to improve your node.js skills using the node.js most powerful features so you can make performant applications to process data on demand i'll leave the link here on the description so you can check the course grade and get to know this amazing content i made for you in case you want to be no notified about all content I've been producing here, I invite you to join our Telegram channel. I'll publish articles and videos and create polls so you can suggest content there as well. Ah, and don't forget to take a look at my website. I've been giving a lot of talks around the world and I'm sure that we'll find something useful to study there. From here, you have a lot more to learn, such as error handling, testing it, and preventing memory leaks when working with Node.js streams. This is how my hottest mastering Node.js streams course can help you. However, if you are still not sure of what scenarios you can use Node.js streams, the most common use cases are for writing and reading data from big data sources such as files and databases, processing big reports and spreadsheets, audio and video processing processing, ETL processes, and basically anything that can be gradually written or consumed. Yeah, people, welcome to the Node.js Streams world. With it, you can do a lot and really feel the real Node.js platform potential. Please 
Tell me here on the comment section what ideas or questions just came out to your mind. Ufa, I hope you found this class useful and don't forget to check the English content playlist here on the channel. I've been building a lot of new content and I'm sure you're gonna like it. Ah, comment below what you wanna see in the next videos and please send this video to all people at your work, your friends and your study groups. I'm sure that it can inspire them as well. I hope this content has exceeded your expectations. Subscribe to this channel and enable the notifications so you can be notified about all new content I publish here. I'm Eric Wendell and I'll see you in the next video.